Okay, so I have a very fine hair, quite thin, and a high forehead with, you know, just very thin hair here, and what does grow, that's as long as it gets. And then it falls out. Um, so I've got a bit of a receding hairline, and that's why I started wearing wigs um, in about the winter of 2014. I just uh, was watching it fall out so much, and I've got a little scar on my forehead, and I could tell that it had receded back from there. So, so just to give you a little bit of my wig story, um, that's what got me starting to wear wigs. I've always thought they were fun. I always wished I could wear them even just for fun. I think they're a great fashion accessory. Um, but I actually felt like, uh, because I wasn't sick and I didn't have something seriously medically wrong causing my hair loss, I almost felt like I, I wasn't allowed to go and get a wig or to wear one. I don't know why. It seems silly now because they're just so great. They're so convenient sometimes and and they just uh, boost your self-esteem amazingly to, to be able to have a good hair day. It, uh, it does wonders. So anyway, this is me without a wig. Um, back in November last year, I got my hair cut very short and all, all done in a platinum blonde which is yellowed quite a bit. And right now it's grown out to the point that it just has no more lift. The lightening it gave it some texture to it so I could have fun with it the way I, I do with some of my wigs. But now the roots have grown in so much that that's just not happening. It just lays flat. And so I'm at an in-between stage and I've come back to, to realizing I can wear wigs again. I mean, not that I didn't know, but I'm having fun wearing them again while I'm figuring out what to do with my hair. I might try growing it to see if it's maybe gotten better since I started wearing them before or or I might just grow it long enough It's uh, until I can get it to the point that it's long enough I can cut all the blonde off and then get it all done again because um, I did it once before when I lightened the whole thing and the ends were already blonde and it just it fries them. It's just a bit too hard on it. So, so anyway that's why I'm back to wearing wigs and um, yeah, so I thought I would show you Risk. Risk is one of my own wigs that I bought. It's by Ellen Villa. It is a lace front. It's right here. And it's uh, champagne rooted, but I think it's light champagne rooted. And when I go check out the box after, I'll put that in the comment section. So, so there's the lace front. Nicely done. And uh, you can see along the front that it's a lot of the lighter hair they've done at the front edge. So you you don't get a lot of the dark against, you know, when you're pasty like me. It's kind of nice if, if the roots aren't too, too dark because it really stands out and that makes a really severe transition from skin to hair. Um, and it's also got the mono in the, uh, the crown area, which for someone, someone like me, um, my day job, I'm sitting at my desk a lot. And when I was wearing, when I've worn wigs and still wearing regular cap wigs, it, it helps a lot to have the, the darker roots, but when my boss comes and stands over my chair to look at and to work with me on something I'm doing on my computer, and I know he can see right there, I just cringe. I have a hard time concentrating sometimes on what I'm supposed to be doing because I'm thinking, oh God, he can see the top of my wig. Does he see the, the permatease? Does he see the wefting? Does he care? He probably doesn't care. He actually calls them, calls them my rugs. So it's, it's pretty casual where I work. Everybody knows that uh, I wear wigs and this past week I started wearing them again and um, yeah so they only tease me knowing that I'm fine with it that it's it's not a sensitive thing for me in that way so it's all good. But anyway so for me I do like the uh, let me see if I can show you the crown area to have a bit of a, a, a natural look because it's just one less thing for me to be self-conscious about if, uh, if anyone's standing over me while I'm sitting in my chair. So let me put this on and I'll show you. It is uh, Risk by Ellen Villa in uh, Champagne Rooted and I believe it's light champagne but I will specify in the comments like I said. Okay, so I just put it on. I haven't done too much with it. I guess I could have kept the camera rolling but there it is. I really do like the lace front on it. I don't know if you can see it well. Yeah, I like that uh, it's been done with a lighter hair at front. It, it just seems to blend in a little more naturally. And so I've got my own hair showing through. 
I'll just show you. The cap is along this edge, and that's my own hair showing on this side of my finger. So the cap comes around like that. So I don't have a lot of, you know, I really wish I had more hair here, but normally, but it's a good thing I don't because it is a smaller fitting cap. Like uh, most people have experienced with the Ellen Villa wigs, they do fit on the smaller side. Um, so I really need to tuck my own hair and my sideburns up in there. Not to mention the back, my hair at the back, so I'm not sure what you might see when I turn around here, but it's a nice short cropped crop wig and I really like it. I like it with a, a longer earring too, just to make it feel a little more feminine. And these earrings I got on eBay. I love these. They're studs with a, a ball in the back. They come in pretty much any color or metal that you can imagine. They're, I don't know, two or three dollars. And I've bought just about every color that, that there is. I love the black ones. I love putting a, a different stud in the front and having the black in the back. And I don't know, I just think they're fun. There's so many fun things on eBay. But these also on eBay. I love my peace earrings. You can get these in a lot of colors too, although some of them is, have sold out. But yeah, sometimes just having really short hair, I like having a longer earring. I just I feel more balanced that way. So, and these are these are wooden earrings, so they're very light. Um, I've got actually big hoops too, but gosh, when you're in the wind, those things hit you in the face and everything. So this is about as big as I can comfortably wear if I'm going outside on a windy day. Anyway. So let me show you the sides and the back, and I hope my own hair is not sticking out, but if it is, let that be a lesson to you to check the back when you go out, all right? Let me just bend my neck. Sticks up maybe a tiny bit, I don't know, you tell me. That's something I should do for more of the short wigs is bend forward and let you see, do they stick up? Um, I haven't got any glue on under under this. That's uh, my shorter wigs. I was wearing Natalie by John Renault a lot. That was one of my go-to wigs when I was wearing them for, for almost a year last year. And um, one thing I noticed is I would look in the mirror at my desk and I would see the hair sort of sticking up at the back. I was constantly smoothing it down. And uh, one thing I found helped quite a bit was either putting a bit of tape along the back on the moleskin and also using the It Stays and just sort of because my own hair was a bit slippery and sliding out, so using the It Stays and rolling it upwards, just like Patty shows you on Wigs by Patty's Pearls, a lot of her videos, she's great. Um, so using that and then getting the back to stick down, that helped a lot. But the funny thing is, when I got my own hair cut about this length, um, I'd go in, into the washroom, I'd see, look, see myself in a mirror in the window, and my own hair sticks up at the back, I think. It might just be my neck. I don't know if this happens to a lot of people where the hair just sticks up awkwardly in the back, but that's uh, it's me and it's my wig, so I guess there's not too much I can do about it. But anyway, one other thing I wanted to show you is um, you see on my styrofoam head there, uh, I just get nylons at the dollar store and put them on. You can tell this is a waistband. That's the second leg of the nylon, so I stick the head into one leg and just pin it in, and it just it just makes them a little more fun. You stick, poke that up the hole in the middle, and then you can stick them on a candlestick or on this little glass vase. And then that actually, uh, for a regular, I would say just for an open cap wig, uh, this is good because it. Uh, your wig stays on, it doesn't slide off. If you happen to have larger wigs, or if you find that they slide off the styrofoam, you don't you don't need the pins so much. Plus, it's cute with the pink, I think. What I would advise against, though, is, uh, or at least just be careful with uh, the lace front, because the lace front can snag a little bit on this. You know, when you get a run in your pantyhose and it doesn't take much, just the edge of the lace front sometimes. Uh, I've stopped doing it, but when I would put one on there, you could feel it sort of catching on the nylon. So. I would not say with your lace front wigs, or be very careful if you do, uh, but definitely with the open cap or regular like non-lace front wigs, uh, 
it's kind of a fun thing to, to put on your styrofoam head. Next I'm going to try Mod Podge. I tried acrylic paint and I should show you one other time. Um, I just think there's too much chance of the paint peeling off and you don't want it getting stuck in your wig or, or causing any problems, which is too bad because it's kind of neat. But um, anyway, I think that's it for today. So, risk in champagne rooted, probably lighter champagne, and 